Welcome to Sports Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm Nick. And I'm Jackson. From Top Notch Sports. Today, we're going to be going over the Los Angeles Chargers offseason salary review with your new head coach, Brandon Staley. We're going to be looking at their salary cap right now, their situation that they're in. They have some good financial stability right now. They got some money. They got some cushion that they can sit on. A bunch of money, a bunch of dollars right now, Jackson. So this is going to be amazing. Again, let's start right here. They got a guy named Justin Herbert, and I think they got to build around him. Uh, my favorite quarterback coming out of last year's draft, uh, everyone was saying Tua, 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 Burrow, Burrow, Burrow. I was preaching Justin Herbert. A lot of people knocked me for it, uh, knocked Mike for it. But once again, we were right. They were wrong. This kid's a stud. This kid can be a future Hall of Famer if he plays anything like he did this season. As you guys know, you Chargers fans, he can make every throw on the field. It's scary being in your division, being a Raiders fan. But, hey, it is what it is. I love this kid. I love this team. I truly do. Let's hop right into it, and let's look at their financial situation right away. Jackson, go ahead. First things first, this team's got $24 million, like Nick just said. Big bucks for this team. Um, remember, um, these are the guys under contract. I said in the last video, I'm stating this one. These are the guys under contract right now. That's why you guys don't see some names on here that you normally would. But first things first, I want to look at the defense. Um, kind of like their big two right here. Joey Bosa and Derwin James. Derwin James hasn't really had a full healthy season of football. I'm pretty sure since he was a rookie or maybe just a year after that. But he's had some injury problems. But nonetheless, this kid still is a stud. Um, Casey Hayward and Chris Harris, solid two cornerbacks for you guys. You guys did just trade Desmond King um, for a, a sixth-round pick, fifth-round pick, something like that. Um, offensive side of the ball, Justin freaking Herbert. This kid played out of his freaking mind, coming in in week two in that unexpected start against Kansas City, and then ever since he's blown everyone off the charts. Um, Keenan Allen, um, again, stud wide receiver. And then Mike Williams, you know, you see he's taken up $15.7 million. That could be something that we may or may not play around with, you know, tune in and see that. Um, Austin Eckler, solid back. A lot of people had really big expectations for him. He didn't really live up to him, but he's nonetheless, he's still a solid running back. This team is pretty solid. They lost a lot of their games by one score. Um, we Part of that could be maybe due to their kicker. Didn't make a lot of field goals this year. Um, we're going to see what um, head coach Brandon Staley does with this team. He's got a lot of potential. I'm going to jump in real fast and say this. Anthony Lynn, I was not a fan of him getting fired. I know there was a lot of time management issues. I like Brandon Staley, but I'm going to go right away and say it. It was a lot of time management, miscommunication between Anthony Lynn, the offensive coordinator, so on and so forth. That's why this team lost a lot of games. And Michael Badgley missing kick kicks over and over again. I think he only kicked 70% this season, which is pretty horrendous. A guy like Austin Eckler that you mentioned, I think he, this kid's still very good. You got to remember he went down with an injury earlier this season, so that's why he didn't live up to all the hype, but I feel like he very well can if he has a full season. Um, Keenan Allen, stud. Um, we're going to wait and see what he can do next year. Again, this guy, I remember when he was had an injury plagued for a while, but he's been looking really good when he's been healthy. Jackson already pointed out, Mike Williams, uh, Huge salary here. You can save $15.7 million if you were to cut him. Remember, green means cut and save. Red means cut and lose. Again, Trey Turner also on a huge contract. Uh, so you just look at this team. I love Kenneth Murray. I had him ranked as my second-best linebacker coming out of last year's draft. Uh, Isaiah Simmons went in a pretty crappy uh, situation, but I do think Kenneth Murray's the best linebacker in the last year's draft. Patrick Queen had a great year, but don't count out this kid, Kenneth Murray. I think he is the best linebacker or the second best behind Isaiah Simmons, who was in a very bad situation. But again, watch Kenneth Murray over the next few years. You see her Adderley, uh, this kid's still young, still improving, so we'll have to wait and see what he can do. And Kaiser White, pretty good player here. So all around, like Jadson said, they really got to boost this offensive line. Nobody's really under contract right now. So on the next slide, we're going to go right into it and show you who's your notable losses, who is currently not under contract. Jadson, go ahead, take it away. All right, these are the boys not under con contract. Pack it in. Buckle up, a lot of names we're reading off right here. Melvin Ingram, first things first. Um, he's the um, edge. His expected deal is two years, $20 million. He played 34.8% of the snaps. Hunter Henry, who, you know, he's finally lived up to his name a little bit, um, had a solid year. His expected deal is four years, $48 million. He played 77.8 of the team's snaps. Michael Davis, one year, $3.4 million. His expect, or um, that's his expected contract, his percentage of snaps he played, 92.4. Forrest Lamp, left guard. 
His expected deal is two years, $4 million. He played 100% of the offensive snaps. Dan Feeney, another offensive lineman, this time a center. His expected deal is two years, $3 million. He played 100% of the snaps as well. Isaac Rochelle, another edge piece. His expected deal is one year, $1 million. He played 42.3% of the snaps. Rashawn Jenkins, who stepped in for um, an injured Derwin James this year, his expected deal is two years, $2 million. He played 82.9% of the team's snaps. Um, Sam Tevy, again, another offensive lineman. Um, his expected deal is two years, $5 million. He played 87.3 of the team's snaps. Um, you're losing your punter and kicker, Ty Long and Michael Badgley. Um, Ty Long, two years, $1.2 $1. million. Michael Badgley, one year, 600000 And then a linebacker in Denzel Perriman. His expected deal is one year, $2.5 million. He played 30.6 of this team's defensive snaps. All right, so you look at this real fast, and typically you want to bring back the guys that play a higher percentage of the snaps because these are guys that you want to stay around for stability purposes, for continuity, uh, to keep familiar faces around in the locker room. They got the money. They really do. They got the money to bring back all these guys. And I'm kind of circling right now. The question is, will they? And that's what we'll look at on the next slide. Here we go. $24 million in estimated cap space. Estimated cuts. We're going to say goodbye to Mike Williams. Let us know what you guys think about that move. But you say 15.7. I don't think that he's top 12, top 13 receiver worthy price wise. I'm sorry. So you're going to cut him, go up to $39.7 million. Uh, it was a tough decision for us to make, but we decided to go with it ultimately. $39.7 million estimated cash space available. Estimated signings. You guys are probably like Dan Feeney and Forest Lamp. Yeah. Cheap deals, bring them back. Let's see what you can do. Dan Feeney on a two-year, $3 million deal. Forrest Lamp re-signed him on a two-year, $4 million deal. Re-signed Sam Tevy for a two-year, $5 million deal. There's three linemen that aren't great. I'm not going to sit here and lie and say these guys are great, but you guys got to understand there is not good linemen in this year's free agency, and most of them are probably going to go back to their team that they are currently uh, not going – well, not currently under contract with – no team can afford to lose an offensive lineman this year, so you're going to have to keep these names and maybe draft on top of it. Uh, you got Hunter Henry on a four-year, $48 million deal. We're going to re-sign him. Michael Badgley on a one-year, $1.2 million deal. And Ty Lorne on a one-year, $1.2 million deal. Um, you also got Allen Robinson here on a four-year, $78 million deal. This guy right here is the ticket. You're only signing this offseason. That's not a re-sign. I feel like if you guys bring in Allen Robinson, give – Justin Herbert, who I think is may or may just be the best rookie in the last decade, the greatest rookie in the last decade at least, give him Allen Robinson, a wide receiver that has been overlooked his entire career because he's never had a good quarterback to give him the ball. Give Justin Herbert this toy to play with, and, dude, he will be having a phenomenal fun time in that playroom this year on the football field. You look at team needs. We're addressing a lot of these team needs this year in the offseason. Left tackle, we're resigning Te uh, Sam Tevy. Uh, for the left guard position, re-sign Forrest Lamp. For center, re-signing Dan Feeney. For tight end, re-signing Hunter Henry. For wide receiver, you're going to sign Allen Robinson. You still need a weak linebacker. You still need a defensive tackle. You still need a cornerback. These are three positions that you should probably attack in the draft pretty early, whether it's a cornerback first, then a weak side linebacker, then a defensive tackle. You still need to address the offensive line. We're not sleeping on the offensive line. Maybe your first pick's a cornerback, then offensive lineman. You got to get a tackle. You got to get a guard. You need depth at this position. Lamp and Feeney are young guys. They are young. They got room to develop. But again, you're going to need better guys. I really like Dan Feeney. The guy has a mullet and everything, but you're going to have to wait and see. Love the guy. Love the kid. Same thing with Michael Badgley. Love them. They're great personalities to have in the locker room. But, I mean, especially Michael Badgley only making 70% of the kicks. Not the greatest. Not what you want to say. But I'm going to be honest with you guys again. We don't know that if, like who, what, 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 what kicker are you going to be bringing in? That's what I'm trying to get to here. We don't know any free agent kicker that's not going to be re-signed, right? It's going to have to be somebody off the streets. Maybe you bring in destroying him from YouTube. I mean, he's a legitimate option. Michael Badgley, right now, we don't have another option for you guys. No kicker is usually testing free agency. They usually just go back to their team that they're uh, not on right now under contract-wise. So, Michael Badgley, we do get you guys bringing back, but look for you guys to potentially move on from Michael Badgley. Let's go on to the next slide where Jats will bring in and talk about this slide. Go ahead. All right. So, we see here, we see that first thing first, the guy in green, the big name, um, Allen freaking Robinson. This kid, like Nick just said, he's an absolute stud. He's never really had 
a good quarterback throughout his career, and he still put up insane numbers. Put him alongside Keenan Allen, and Justin Herbert will have a field day. Um, you see all these guys in orange right here, Sam Tevy, Forrest Lamp, Dan Feeney, we did, and Hunter Henry. Uh, we did just re-sign those guys. So if you look at our reserves down in the bottom left corner, don't be surprised if you guys go out and get a left tackle, a left guard, or a center in the draft. Because um, like Nick said, these guys aren't the greatest. They can definitely get the job done, but don't count on it. Um, those guys could be replaced um, for sure. Um, weak side linebacker, Drew Tranquil. Um, you guys picked him up in the fourth round um, a couple drafts ago. Um, hasn't really panned out. He's had an injury this past season. So he could be a guy that gets replaced in the draft. Um, not a lot of moves were made with this team. This team is, again, it's pretty complete. They were barely losing games, like you said. It was a time management issue. And, again, Badgley only making 70% of the, um, those kicks. Those will definitely lose games for you, especially with a lot of their losses being one-score games. Um, Brandon Staley, um, he's a defensive guy. I mean, he was coming in defensive coordinator for the Rams, and he did a great job over there. Again, he did have a lot of talent over there with Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. But what does this defense have? It has talent, and that's not what he lacked in L.A. So – Look for Brandon Staley to do a great job with this defense. Look for Herbert to do just his thing like he did this year. I expect him to do great things this year. Again, like I said in the last video, this is a competitive AFC West division this year with the Chiefs going back to another Super Bowl. The Raiders have been competing. The Broncos look good on this year, or at least in our past video, with the moves we had to make. And the Chargers this isn't a bad team. So, again, this team could be sneaky good and make a playoff run as like maybe a seven seed wild card team. We'll just have to wait and see. I have high hopes for Brandon Staley and I have high hopes for this Chargers team. Absolutely. And to sum this thing up real fast, I'm just going to talk one more time. You got this offense here under Justin Herbert. Again, when you got a kid like this guy, I mean, you're going to win a lot of games. And I feel like the AFC West is the division of the future because you look at Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes. They, they, those two combined may be the future of the NFL. And I feel like Justin Herbert, has the potential to be one of the greatest quarterbacks in, in, in the league right now. One of the best ones in the league right now. Young kid, Patrick Mahomes is young kid, right? But those two in the same division, it's going to be interesting to see. So got Derek Carr, who you can't sleep on. Drew Locke is a guy right now, a lot of potential, but hasn't really been panning out. So we'll see what he can do. Look at this team, though. Offensive line last year, you're not moving anything, really. And what I want to show you guys is I know you might say, well, Dan Feeney or Forrest Lamb or Sam Ted, these guys aren't good. We're not going to win games. We lost last year. But the truth is you guys were losing by single digits, right? You guys weren't losing by 20, 40, 35, 15. You know, you guys were losing by three, six, nine, seven. That can be changed by continuity, keeping familiar faces around and not letting everyone walk. Maybe you guys go out and draft a center that's better than Fiend. Maybe you draft a guard that's better than the Lamb. Maybe a tackle that's better than Sam Tevy. Maybe you guys go out and get a weak side linebacker like we said you guys probably should. That could very well get you guys over the hump from losing close games to winning games. And then if you had another piece, really dominating the league. I mean, that's how close this team is. Get a little bit younger at the cornerback position. Draft a cornerback. That's huge. Again, Jackson mentioned Brandon Staley being a defensive guy and having a lot of talent for the Rams. He's absolutely right. But like Jackson said, you guys have talent. Joey Bosa, Kenneth Murray, Kazir White, Derwin James, uh, still Chris Harris and Casey Hayward. I mean, Uchenna Nwosu, this kid plays good when he's in. Justin Jones looks good. Linville Jolson, when has he not really been good? Nasir Adderley, I mean, he's a young kid. Let him grow. Let's see what he can do with him. You know what? If he's not good, you find his replacement. This team right here is solid. And if you can bring in a guy like Allen Robinson, he can get you over the edge. You got Keenan Allen in the slot, Allen Robinson on the outside, and Jalen Guyton, one of Justin Herbert's favorite targets from a season ago. On the outside this year, let them build continuity. Just wait and see what they can do. I'm excited to see what the team can do. And Austin Neckler, this kid can get it done in any way, shape, or form. Guys, that's all from us from Top Notch Sports. We'll see you guys soon. Uh, Jackson, that's all, right? What else do you have? I got nothing, Nick. I'm, I got high hopes for this team, like I just stated. Absolutely. This team can absolutely be a playoff team, so we'll have to wait and see. Guys, that's all from Top Notch Sports. We'll see you guys soon. We are... Built better. See you guys soon. Peace.